Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. First of all, Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you find yourself in good health and stay that way all year long. The content of this video, I'm going to share with you my everyday carry items, i.e. tools that I keep on my person when I'm in my wood shop. And things that I use at a particular location, I tend to not carry on my person. I'll leave it near or at that location. So, I've been through this process. I've, it's been an iterative process for me over the years, but I've pretty much settled on a work vest as my holster of choice, so to speak. Now, I, I've had work vest for over seven years now, and last year I upgraded to the Snickers all-around work vest. This is model 4250, I believe. Uh, it's got some improvements over the black laters that I was using before, primarily the fabric and more pockets, more easily accessible pockets, but it's got some disadvantages too, and I'm going to cover a little bit of that. But first of all, the reason I like a vest is that they are a lot easier to put on than an apron. You know, the kind with it that either loops around the neck, which I hated. I have one of those. I wore it exactly one time and then went to the kind with the cross straps, which are more awkward to put on. But these put on just like a regular piece of clothing. So this Snickers vest I ordered from Snickers Direct. And I've had it for about seven months. So I've got enough time under my belt, so to speak, to give at least a good thing of a good review of this particular vest and what I like about it and what I don't like. So now that I've got it on, I want to cover one of the first dislikes about this vest. And I noticed this the first time I put it on and it still kind of annoys me. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but it's kind of a muscle memory. And that is the zipper. Uh, the zipper on this thing, uh, before I get into the zipper, this thing does have fold-out flaps here to where you can wear this over a jacket and kind of expand the breadth of it, so to speak. But the zipper on this, and let me adjust the camera down a bit. The zipper on this, zipper side, the zipping side is on my left-hand side. For every other jacket I've got, including the black later vest, anything with a zipper, the zipper is on. The zipping portion is on the right hand side. So my muscle memory is to grab this, then insert the little oh, long elongated tab there into the zipper and then zip it up. For the Snickers, it's backwards. Now, whether this is a fluke or not, I don't know. But anyway, that's just something I have to get used to. It's one of my first dislikes about this. One of the likes about this is it's got an integrated belt. Integrated belt, hey, that's great. So you can put that on and it's comfortable. I've got this thing loaded with most tools, but it not every tool. Because one of the things I like to carry is this eight ounce Warrington hammer. It did not come with this uh, hammer loop. Now this hammer loop is flexible and it just slides on over the belt portion of this. Uh, with other vests, their hammer loops are included. Unfortunately, they don't hold this hammer very well. And this one is marginal at holding this hammer, which kind of gets me to my next dislike, other than the fact that this is an option. I can put the hammer in. Let me back up enough. But let me show you what happens. And this will happen when I take the vest on and off, put the vest on and off. If I've got the hammer in the loop, it falls out the bottom. I think this would not happen with a, with a larger claw hammer, but with this eight ounce Warrington hammer, uh, that's a nuisance to me. It's actually hit me on the foot once doing that. So, um, what I think I'm going to do is probably 3D print some uh, something out of TPU to try to close that opening enough to keep that from happening. So my first tool is this Warrington 8-ounce hammer. 
The next thing I don't like about this are these adjustable shoulders. And this is so you can adjust how high this rides on your body. So if you're short-waisted or long-waisted, this might be useful to you. If you're an average build, this to me adds too much bulk up in these shoulder areas. I normally, I've gotten to the point where I don't notice it so much, but it's still, if you get real hot under there, which I tend to do, uh, this is just extra insulation, which I don't need. So that's one of my dislikes about this uh, vest as opposed to some of the others. If I go to the black later vest, they don't have this feature. So if that affects your purchase decision, if you're extremely long-waisted or short-waisted, maybe this will be an advantage to you. For me, it's not. Uh, one of the things I like about this vest that the other doesn't have, it's not that big of an impact to me, but it may be for you. And it depends on what you carry in your vest. Uh, this particular vest has uh, a padded pocket that will actually fit that will actually fit a smartphone. Now I don't carry a smartphone in my vest, but this is a Galaxy or a Samsung Galaxy something or other. Uh, but this is uh, you can store a phone in here. Whereas in these black later vests, so I'm going to find it here. It's kind of here it is. This pocket, I might be able to get this in there, but this seems more designed for a. I can barely get that in there, but pocket will barely close. The other one, the canvas one I've got, won't store that at all. So this is marginally acceptable. It seems more designed for a flip phone than a, a modern cell phone or modern uh, smartphone. So that's one of my likes about this, but I don't use it. So maybe it's not a like at all. Maybe I'm just indifferent on it. It is just a notable difference between this and the black later vest. As far as the only other like about this, all these vests will have what they call a safety strap. And what I like about the Snickers vest over, say, the Black Lader is these safety straps, which I presume when you bend over are to limit how far these pockets will flop forward. Uh, these are shorter and much better made because they tend to stay behind the pockets Whereas on the black later vest, they tend to hang out and catch on stuff. So that's one like I, I like about this, say over the black later vest. Whether other vests have those same issues, I don't know. I'm not going to try them. I found something that works for me most of the time, so I'm going to stick with this one. As far as tools go, uh, we've already talked about the hammer. I'm going to start with my uh, left breast pocket and some of the things I have here, I've got two dry markers. One's a Pika, one's a Holtafors. Now I have reasons for liking one more than the other, but the reason I have two, and they're two different colors, is that this one I have white lead in it, and this one I have graphite. And I do a lot of work with the lighter maple and the dark woods, Therefore, the different colors come in very helpful to me. So I've got opinions on why I like one over the other, and even some I bought an off-market brand, off-brand, uh, probably two years ago, and honestly, I don't like that at all. So if there's any interest in a comparison on those, uh, post them in the comments below. Another thing I keep in this pocket are these two Pentel uh, graph gear pens or pencils. I carry the 0.5 and the 0.7 millimeter uh, because that's what I use most and that's why I keep them on my person. 
I've picked these up for some other vi YouTube videos I've watched from woodworkers and I like this because it's got a retractable sleeve that you don't have to hold this in and push the uh, push the lead back in. But they're high quality pencils. I don't know how much they cost, but hey, I like them. Uh, so that's it for this upper left breast pocket, except for one thing. These pockets, both these breast pockets, left and right, have kind of an interior pocket that has a tab. You just pull out and put your hand in there, and it's got a stop there. The black layer vest does not have this. Now this one's empty. And this one, I can't even feel I've got anything in it, but I do. Because one of the other tools I like to carry are these gloves. And these are, uh, these gloves, I like to wear them when I'm milling rough lumber. They fit good, they feel good, they give me extra grip. And when I'm cutting melamine, uh, this protects your hand. If you've ever worked with melamine, Run it. If you accidentally run your hand across it, it's like you might as well just sliced it with a razor blade. Uh, but uh, these gloves prevent that. I like the Rangate. I've also used Pug 17s. I actually like these better. Uh, but get you a good set of gloves. And for the safety police that say I shouldn't be wearing gloves in a wood shop, I'd say grow up. Your rationale is always, well, if it gets too close to the blade, it could drag your hand into the blade. Well, duh. If your hand's that close to the blade where a glove would catch in and drag your hand in, your hand's too close to the blade. So, uh, there's just so many arguments that you can make to wear gloves in the wood shop and for certain operations. I'm not saying it's necessary for everyone, but protect your hands. Rant over. Uh, next thing is my right hand pocket. Uh, right hand breast pocket and this is the only vest I found where I like to where I found that will actually carry this uh, uh, six inch digital calipers it's got a loop fabric or web loop on the front there that I can put that in uh, usually I have to struggle because it's got a little knob, locking knob here and a per, a protrusions there sometimes it uh, this web will press on these buttons and uh, reset the thing to uh, reset my zero or turn it on uh, when I don't want it on or perhaps even it'll change from metric to imperial or vice versa but that web here is a nuisance thing that I don't particularly care for I think a better solution would be to have a magnetic strip inserted here where it would just be strong enough to hold this because my magnetic personality is not strong enough to hold this uh, caliper. So, uh, the black lader does not have uh, this, this loop, so that's a, that's a thing I like about this, but I think it could be better. The other thing about these pockets, or this particular right hand pocket, is it's got a nice tab on it, and just pull it open, and inside it's fairly wide, put your whole end in there. But I have this uh, Woodpecker's uh, Paolini rule, pocket rule. Uh, this is a six inch, which uh, for me is 150 millimeters because I like metric. Uh, but I like the stainless steel version because it's thinner and you can, your chances of uh, when you're making a measurement or making a marking, you don't really have parallax issues now. You might say that, man, that's not big, that big of a deal with this because it's got a little notch here on this end that you can use to mark and you just use this as a guide. And that's true, but uh, again, don't, I don't care for the aluminum version. I like the stainless steel. It's worth the extra cost, which is nominal. I think it's six or seven bucks, something like that. So those are two, my two breast pockets. Below that, on either side, are identical pockets that, that hang loose. And these are these kind of offer an advantage because it gives you more pockets, but they're, this is a, it's a two-handed operation to open these, which is kind of a not such a good thing. This is single-handed here. I can just open, close it, whatever. 
These, when I pick them up, I have to either jiggle it or just use two hands to open it because they're, they're not attached on the bottom. Um, maybe that's a good thing, maybe it didn't, I don't know. But in this pocket on my left hand side, I use my relatively infrequently used tools that I like to have that use in multiple locations in the shop. And this one is a Woodpecker's Delft Square. It's the smaller version. I wish they made this in metric, but they don't. Uh, so it's this I primarily use to verify machine setups, check fence squares, and the like. I will use this to check square on the inside. Not so much for the outside. I think it's difficult to use on that. But you can also use this as a speed square. And if this was metric, I could use this uh, to mark guidelines. But that's the Delft square. Uh, stainless steel as well. On the other side, it's basically a mirror image. Uh, this, this actually has pockets, a front set of pockets that are divided. Uh, one that's probably about, oh, I don't know, 60, 75 millimeters. And then this one that's probably about 25. I don't keep anything in these front pockets. I generally find them too small. But in case in the, this pocket on the other side that's, that's smaller, uh, it's another relatively infrequently used tool that you use frequently have to carry on your person and that's the Veritas bevel gauge. This is the small version and I like the lever actuated one which takes up less room and is more comfortable in this pocket than say uh, one with a, a locking knob. And this, this is plenty secure so that's the Veritas uh, bevel gauge. I'm going to move the camera down a bit so I see the other portions. And I've got pockets on the front and I've got pockets on the back. The back pockets in any of my vests I've never put anything in them. I just, you know, sometimes I take a break and sit down in a chair and having something in these back pockets is just uncomfortable so I don't even bother uh, putting anything in them. And I don't really need to. I carry on me enough to get the job done, but not too much to be over, overweight. On this, uh, this has front pockets on both sides. They're divided a little bit differently. Uh, there's two tiers. There's a full width rear pocket, and there's a divided in two front pocket section along with webbing. Uh, that I suppose could be used to store other tools. I don't really do that. I don't use the two front pockets on this side, but I do use the rear pocket. And what I like to use is a Peck Engineering double square, uh, four inch or 100 millimeter, whatever you prefer. This is a high quality tool uh, used. I can use that to check square for machine setups, to measure depths. But I like this. This is a this is a quality product with uh, not such a high cost. So that's the Peck uh, Peck or Products Engineering, and this is model 7184-100, and that's a that's a good square. I like it. Uh, so that does it for this pocket. Now on the other side, I've got more. Uh, first of all, let's start. It's instead of two pockets on the front side, it's got three, and this one actually having the webbing. And but I need to put this back in the pocket because this doesn't hold very well. It doesn't have much gription. Um, this is a Pika visor. It's a cr basically a crown. And I use the white crowns because mostly I deal with mark, uh, darker woods. And I like to use this for rough layout for uh, various cut-ups of, uh, of uh, hardwoods. Now, Apica makes this in two other colors, blue and red, which I have. I just don't carry them because I mostly deal with dark hardwoods. Uh, if I'm using maple, I'll go drag the, the blue one out. 
Red one works too, but I, the blue seems to give me just a little more contrast. So this is the Pika visor. The uh, next one over in the front pocket is my favorite utility knife, and that's the Fiskars Pro. It is not one of those multi uh, detent. It's got two positions, fully extended and fully retracted, and it locks in position. And it's also got extra blade storage, which I could open up that I won't do, but this is the Fiskars Pro, and I purchased that at Lowe's. Next pocket over in the front is, this is kind of a tight fit, but I can usually get it up fairly easily. Here's my Lee Nielsen uh, screwdriver. And this one I carry on me because I frequently sharpen my hand planes, and this is what I fit is a perfect fit for the screw and the chip breaker to remove the chip breaker so I can sharpen my blades. The Lee Nielsen. Uh, chip breaker screwdriver. If you use a regular screwdriver, they don't fit very well and it's easy to get burrs in those chip breaker screws. And in the back portion of the pocket is my favorite tape measure, at least for the moment, it is a Halta Force Tau Meter 3 meter version. And I've got a video on this, just search my channel. Uh, but that's the tools that I carry in my uh, holster. So that's my everyday carry, and uh, I hope you've gathered something from this video, and I'd love it if you'd post in the comments what you use for your everyday carry in your shop. Maybe I'm missing something. What holster do you use? Maybe I'm missing something better than what I currently have. I don't know that for sure, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. But thanks for watching, and have a great one. We'll catch you on the next one.